Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Priyanka. I am a law of attraction practitioner and an energy healer. On my channel, I share videos um, where I um, give away law of attraction uh, techniques that are simple to uh, implement. Uh, energy healing techniques, meditative techniques, uh, spell work, moon work. If you are interested in learning about these, then do subscribe to my channel by clicking the bell icon and do like and share. Uh, in this video, I'm going to share a common complaint that I keep hearing from many people. And this has also been my complaint when I started with the Ho'oponopono. Uh, prayer chanting okay so i'm going to clear away some myth around this prayer uh, what happens is uh, generally when people uh, start chanting hoponopono that is the first step that i also uh, tell all my friends all my clients that you know start with hoponopono because clearing your negative emotions is the first step being at zero i have also published a video on this one uh, a few days back just look that up it is always necessary for you to clear the ground before you can manifest your desires or whatever you want to manifest okay now when people start chanting hoponopono initially in the first seven to eight days they get phenomenal results okay wonderful results because they try it out on daily simple things okay they are not getting an uber so they quickly do hoponopono they have a you know they are sorted there then they have a conflict with somebody in office and they just chant Ho'oponopono in their mind and that uh, turns out to be a positive conversation. Um, or let's say they are trying to book tickets at a certain price and they are not getting and then they chant some Ho'oponopono, come back and you know, it's all done. So typically they try it around very basic things and it works wonderfully for these things. However, as they start experimenting more with Ho'oponopono and start clearing much more deeper emotions with Ho'oponopono, sometimes the results that they see, they consider that as very negative. And they start feeling, oh my God, what's gone wrong with Ho'oponopono? I have been doing this Ho'oponopono chanting and everything seems to be going wrong now. I'm attracting more such situations which are making me more angry, uh, more conflicted, uh, more worried. So what's happening? What's happening? So this, I, I just want to tell you at the start of the video, you are on the right track. And this is the expected behavior of the Ho'oponopono prayer. And I'll tell you why this is the expected behavior and what lies next. Okay, what you should do in a situation like that. So Ho'oponopono prayer chanting is about clearing your negative energies and negative emotions. Okay, now whenever you look into your subconscious mind, into deep-seated emotions which are there for a very long period of time and they have gained significant momentum over the years, okay? If you believe in past life, then some of these emotions are being carried away from your past lives. If you do not believe in past life, then it is the emotions that you pick up, you know, uh, from the time uh, you are conceived in your mother's womb. Okay, and maybe consciously you no, no longer remember all these things till you are seven, eight years old. Those memories are already gone for you, right? You don't even remember. So when you start working, those emotions play out in our day-to-day -day lives, in our interaction with people, in our, in we working with circumstances, situations. Okay, when those emotions come out, while they seem to be very surface emotions, but they are actually rooted very deeply in our subconscious mind. And there is a lot going on, you know, it's like an iceberg. You see only the tip, but there is a lot of it inside your uh, subconscious mind that needs proper cleaning. Okay, it's not just cleaning at the surface. So when you start doing Ho'oponopono on a deep emotion that has been a problem for you for a very long period of time, what happens is initially when you scrap out the surface, you start feeling a little better. But then what happens is the prayer brings out all your pent up negative memories and emotions and, uh, you know, experiences that are stored and linked to, to that particular area that you are working on. And since it is bringing up all the dirt, all of that past things which no longer serve you, you are seeing 
your experiences flaring up with negativity. Okay. Please understand this is a positive sign. This is not a negative sign. This is a positive sign. This is how it has to work. So somebody asks you to clean a room. If you just do a surface cleaning, will it be clean? No, you really have to. If you really want to do a thorough job, you need to actually go into every nook and corner. You need to dust it. You need to clean it. You need to mop it. So you need to actually, if you need to a thorough job so that, you know, you clean it properly, you make the space empty, you are bringing that space to zero once again, then, you know, you have to really go deep with your cleaning. So when you are doing Ho'oponobono, please continue. Even when you see these emotions coming up, these negative experiences flaring up in your life and you work on specific uh, emotions, please be advised that these are emotions which have been with you for very long. There is a lot more going under the surface. The prayer is only bringing out those past experiences, past memories, so that you can clean more. Now I'm going to give you two examples, okay? Um, from my own life, and if time permits, I don't know how long this video will go. If time permits, I'll also share another individual's um, experience, but for now I'll share two experiences from uh, two of my own experiences. So I was working on a certain emotion and um, I, I wasn't even conscious that, you know, I am again and again, every single day I'm working on that emotion because that emotion is coming to me from different people, from different circumstances in life. And as and when it comes, I'm working with for Ho'oponopono chanting for those people, my relationship with those people, my those circumstances to ease out. But uh, actually I'm working on those one, one, one particular emotion that is linked to all of this. Okay, the same emotion is coming back to me, either from a set of people or from certain circumstances that I'm in. So I wasn't really very conscious of that, that, you know, for the past few days, I'm working on that particular emotion. What happened is, I start, start, started suddenly feeling very feverish. And I was feeling a cold, I was feeling feverish, I was feeling um, body aches. And every single morning for almost seven days, I woke, with a, woke up with a terrible, terrible headache. And I was thinking something must be wrong. I mean, uh, am I again um, uh, having a uh, COVID? Because I've already had COVID twice. I have the booster dose done. So I'm thinking, even if I have COVID, is it going to be this bad? Uh, because, uh, you know, why am I feeling so sick? And it's been seven days. And um, in fact, when I was having these symptoms, trust me, just the prior few days before this started, I was in a very controlled environment. I didn't go out much. I had a very, um, uh, you know, controlled uh, social environment. And I was in my own personal space. I was uh, not really interacted too much with anybody. So that I don't know. And um, uh, I was thinking I'm not even stepping out. So it's very highly unlikely that I will get COVID again. And then something made me feel, no, there's something else to it. Because some parts of the day, I'm perfectly fine. I'm waking up with a headache, I'm waking up with a feverish feeling and then uh, maybe during the afternoon or the evening, again, I'm starting to feel unwell and again, I'm, again, I'm feeling better late evening and then before I go to sleep, again, I'm feeling unwell, okay? So in parts of the day, when there are certain times of the day when I'm absolutely feeling fine. Now, if I have a fever, it has never happened that, uh, you know, parts of the day I'll be fine and parts of the day I will not be fine unless it's malaria. <laughs> malaria in this situation is very highly unlikely. So I knew that something else uh, is on. And that is when I realized that the emotion I was working on is so deep seated in me. I figured out that, yes, this is one emotion I'm working on through multiple people, through multiple circumstances, life is bringing me back that same emotion. I'm working on it. And I have to be truthful to myself, right? And in my reality, I knew that that emotion has been an area, a challenging area for me for many, many years. For many years. It's to do with my self-esteem. It is to do with my level of confidence. And um, I don't want to get into, uh, you know, too much of detail, but that is one area which has been uh, with me uh, for a very long period of time. 
And uh, the moment I recognized this, I understood why I was get, getting that feverish sensation for seven, eight days. And trust me, the moment that awareness came, even my symptoms started subsiding. The body was trying to make me realize that there is a lot more that you need to clean under the surface. Don't just work on these circumstances. Don't just work on this relationship with your certain people who are instilling this emotion in you, but go much deeper. This is deep seated. So the fever was a sign from my body, from my pain body to make me aware that I need to work and clean more on that emotion. Okay, so this is one first example. The second example is very interesting. Second one was also when I realized uh, the truth behind it, you know, I was surprised. So I have this problem with eczema. I often get uh, this eczema flare-ups and um, I, this is so common for me that I know the right medication. I know the right kind of care I need to give to my skin at the initial stages only nowadays okay in the last few years i've come to know the moment it flares up i i get an early sign when it is about to flare up with a slight itchiness it starts the moment it starts i know which medication to um, you know um, uh, take which uh, what kind of uh, uh, care i need to provide my skin so i know all of that now um, i was working on couple of emotions at that point in time and it was to do with separation anxiety and feeling restricted okay feeling as if i'm helpless so that helplessness and separation anxiety were two emotions that time i was working on and i was seeing a lot of circumstances coming to me a lot of people coming into my life who were making me feel that emotion you know a lot and so i knew that th these are the two emotions i need to work on now uh, so I was continuously cleaning that those emotions using Ho'oponopono. When I was doing that Ho'oponopono chanting for several days, suddenly I saw this eczema flare up for me. And even though I took care from the first day, I started applying medication, I started taking care of my skin. Trust me, this never happened in many, many years. It suddenly flared up, even though I was taking all the medication and stuff like that. That got me thinking something is linked to this eczema. Now, there is so much more to these two emotions, separation anxiety and um, you know, feeling restricted beyond what I am seeing today in my current life. They are, this emotion, these emotions are deep within. They are rooted much deeply. So what I did is, I did a simple self-hypnosis to go down my subconscious mind. I will post another video where I'll teach you a very simple technique of self um, uh, hypnosis and um, I did that self-hypnosis and when I went on my memory lane I realized which I was not consciously remembering is and these these are consciously I've heard these stories from my mother okay so my first eczema started when I was about a year year and a half old okay and that's the time I had learned to walk I had become a toddler I was learning to walk and um, my mother in those days, she was, my, she was married in a very conservative household. My uh, grandparents were there and my grandmother was uh, very disciplined. She was, um, you know, she had a very strong personality and she had her own ways and own ideas. And uh, she was very strict okay, with my mother. And my mother had to execute a lot of responsibilities at home, okay, right from cooking and cleaning. There was a lot of work in the household. And because I had learned to walk at that point in time and I was a, um, and my parental home even today has a lot of, you know, staircases up and down. There are a lot of staircases. So my mother thought that in case uh, I am left unattended, I will start climbing stairs and maybe I will fall and I'll hurt myself. That's how children are, right? And in order to protect me so that I am not hurt when she's not around, uh, while she's in the kitchen or doing some work, for a few hours, she would keep me tied to a furniture. It could be a chair, it could be a uh, bed stand, it could be anything. And she would just keep me tied. Uh, my legs, she used to keep it tight in an attempt to protect me from getting hurt. Okay. And for a child, however, for a baby, you know, a one year old baby, uh, the separation from the mother caused an anxiety. Okay. It was creating a separation anxiety in me. And since I am bound 
to a certain area and I have to move and I feel restricted in that area, I used to feel restricted perhaps, okay? The emotion was, I am helpless. I am not able to set myself free and express myself and do what I want to do. I'm restricted. I'm helpless, okay? I'm tied down. Those were the two emotions that perhaps I was feeling as a child. And that is the time when the body started showing, the pain body started showing that reaction in the form of an eczema. Okay, so that was the first time when I got eczema. And then that episode continued for a few years, went through medication and some food allergies were identified. And with all of those external symptomatic treatment, I was able to get better. And, um, and then eventually um, in my adult life, I started seeing this eczema uh, whenever I was feeling uh, stressed, anxiety, separation anxiety, feeling restricted, feeling helpless, I would get this eczema flare. Okay, so um, uh, so when I started doing now, coming back to the present day, when I started doing Ho'oponopono on these two emotions, um, I realized that this is deep seated. The eczema gave me a sign that I need to go deeper, work on these emotions much more than I'm working on the surface on these I need to go deeper and only if I go deeper I'll be able to uproot these emotions right uh, from the depth of my subconscious mind okay so um, so these are the only two experiences I'm going to uh, share today I think uh, we are making a very long video otherwise and uh, so the good news is when you see these situations don't stop just continue to clean. It is just the universe's way of telling you that you need to clean more. It is helping you to identify certain things which have gone out of your conscious mind, but it's stored in your pain body, okay? Deeply in your pain body. And uh, I will do one more video for things like this, where you start, when the body starts showing a symptom, okay? The body starts showing a symptom because these memories, these emotions get embedded into your cellular uh, you know, uh, into your cellular structures, I will do an EFT video. And EFT works very well, uh, which is tapping, works very well when uh, something is at the cellular level. So I'll do another video on that. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, this um, video is helpful to you. And when you do Ho'oponopono, don't stop doing it because you start seeing more and more negative <laughs> situations coming up. Just to remember that this is temporary. It is only taking you to, towards um, growth towards transformation and it's just a small period of time which is causing you some pain but just continue uh, and be consistent in your practice and very soon just bring the awareness to where it is actually all linked back to the moment you bring this awareness you will see these symptoms or these additional situ uh, situations will start subsiding okay it is only nature's way of telling you that you need to clean deeper so I'm very keen to hear your results. If you have any such experiences, do type it in the comments box. If you want to write one-on-one -on -one to me, you can use my email ID for that. It's there in my channel description. And uh, till we meet again, bye-bye. Have a good weekend.